I promise that next week I'm going to actually talk more about this condition that we're in. Um, but I really thought that the topic I planned on talking about today is going to serve us while we're going through this experience as well, when we're feeling isolated from each other, and also when we are, um, well, let me just ask you, how many of you went to the store this weekend and couldn't find any toilet paper? <laughs> how much longer will we be able to face that without things coming up for us in an emotional way? So um, I hope that today's message will serve you as you're going out this week and in new ways and having new experiences. And um, next week, my message will focus on how unity is viewing this situation from a spiritual perspective as well as a very practical perspective. So make sure to come back on live with us next week on our live stream, and we'll talk about that. But, you know, when I started this message series on the season for nonviolence, I really had no clue where it was going to go. <laughs> I... Um, I'd heard about it for years. I'd never really delved into it. And there was just so much to talk about in regards to this season that um, it's important, I think, for me to just keep kind of, I hate to say winging it, but just tapping into um, what I sense each one of us might be experiencing uh, in regards to the violence in the world and a more subtle level of violence in our life. You know, I um, didn't ever plan to stand up here and tell you how to break up a fight. <laughs> uh, I wasn't planning on talking about lobbying or marching or uh, you know, doing those big things. We're not talking about freeing nations like Gandhi tried to do or change the rights of an entire group of people um, as Martin Luther King did. But let's focus a little bit more on those subtle feelings of violence within ourselves and how we can undo them. We've been talking over the last few weeks about showing respect to one another, about setting our own boundaries. We've been talking about how to communicate during a, a, a moment of conflict, but doing it with respect. And today I want to talk about a quality that is absolutely a bridge to bringing peace in our lives from a place of conflict. It's something that will help us reduce our feeling of separation. It's definitely going to ask you to step outside of your comfort zone as we talk about this today, but this quality is a bridge that takes us from the human level of consciousness to the spiritual version of ourself. It's that in-between step or point of view that we must take to move us from ego sense of fear to divine wisdom and divine practicality, actually. And this quality that I'm talking about is the quality of courage. Courage is something that um, is hard to step into because it's asking us to step outside of our comfort zone. It's asking us to move out of what's safe and step into the unknown, it's, um, it's that which vaults us from our humanity into a higher level of ourself, but it doesn't necessarily come easy because it's, it's before spirit has really stepped in and expressed through us, and yet it has to come beyond what the human would normally do in a situation. So that's why I'm calling it the bridge between human and spirit, is our, our quality of, of courage. You've probably heard it said many times, to feel the fear and do it anyway. Yes. So that's what courage is going to help us do. One of the definitions of courage that I found in the dictionary up here on the screen is mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. So today we're not going to be talking about courage to support us in a physical danger. This is going to be more about mental danger that we experience way more often in our life. It's that danger that the ego throws up when it starts to feel threatened. It's that feeling that um, we're about to be rejected or we might fail in this moment. It's that moment where the ego says, um, I don't want to stand out. I don't want other people to notice me. I just want to fit in, make everybody think I'm like everybody else. So it's that courage that has to come in and support us when we're starting to feel like, uh-oh, I'm looking different. That's a bad thing. It's the kind of quality that 
we're going to need to draw on more often than you think when it comes to creating reconciliation with each other and being a presence of peace in the world when everyone else is feeling a sense of upset. You know, I'm going to show you a few different opportunities that we're going to be able to use our courage for over the next forever. <laughs> I just started thinking, this is no special opportunity to use our courage. We need our courage every day of our life. So let me just give you some examples of when this might happen. First of all, using our courage when uh, someone else is in trouble. And we are feeling called to be the first to step in and support that person. You know, when the rest of the crowd is sitting back watching someone be bullied or ostracized, it's calling on our courage to step in there and um, be a support system to them. What I've noticed is that if you have the courage to stand in support, that that courage is like a magnet for others, that they tend to be more encouraged to join you in that process. Just like, you know, when uh, we riot, <laughs> um, we get this maddening consciousness that just fills everybody in the immediate area. We can do the same with our courage. And this is an opportunity for us as we're seeing others um, being set apart or set out in front of us in a bad way. It's our opportunity to use our courage and stand in uh, solidarity with them. You know, I lived in San Francisco in the 80s and 90s and early, two, oh, la, long time, 20 plus years. And um, one of the things I noticed in the 80s was when the HIV virus started to come to the forefront. The gay community really started being launched, really for the first time in a big way, before us. And um, it was obvious that the majority was going to take a back seat in this and um, perhaps separate themselves from the gay community, or even worse, uh, point them out as bad, evil, wrong. Um, and during this time when everyone was basically not using their courage, there was one organization that I became familiar with that stood out, and that was a group called PFLAG, P-F-L-A-G, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. And this was an organization who was there day in and day out, supporting not only the gay community, but the community surrounding the gay community that was trying to be in support, but were possibly confused about what to do next or how to be in relationship with others. And they were vocal about this, and they were available to us, and they were setting an example for the world. And were really the first group in my, in my vision that were um, supporting with their courage. And now I fast forward to the last, I can't remember, Kim Chor, when was the, the gay pride parade that we participated in? Was it this past year or two years ago? Okay, so 2018. Fast forward to 2018 when Unity in Naperville is walking in the pride parade in Aurora, its first pride parade. And the streets were lined with thousands of people who were supporting the gay community. And it just made my heart sing to see how that early courage in the 80s kind of spread out and seeped into our community till we got to the point, and we've got a long ways to go, people, but we got to a point where we are much more courageous in our love and acceptance. And you know what's interesting is what I love about unity as a worldwide movement is that we were always open and loving and supporting to the gay community, welcoming, not only welcoming them into our communities, but basically depending on them <laughs> to be part of our leadership teams. So I just want you to consider that the courage that Unity has shown uh, in just that one subject is a demonstration of what we can be for the world in all those hot spots, in all those places where we need to open our hearts more and feel a deeper connection. Use your courage to stand in support of someone else. Also, I wanted to talk about being brave for someone else. There are a lot of people on this planet who struggle with just being themselves and you have the power to actually support them in that process, to notice the good in them, to call it out in them, to appreciate, you know what, I really appreciate your ability to do this, that, whatever their talent or gift is. Um, 
Give them an opportunity to talk about it, to share their feelings about themselves, because most of the time, those particular people are too reticent to share anything about themselves. You can be brave for them. And as you acknowledge their gifts and just the essence of who they are, your courage will actually give them courage to step out and be more of themselves. We can also use our courage, this is when we really, really, really need it, is when we're facing someone that is demonstrating hate. These are the people who need um, our kindness the most, and it takes courage to be kind in that kind of a situation. But I just want you to, to realize that when everything in you says fight back, uh, throw insult for insult, the best thing that you can do for both parties in this situation is be brave enough to simply be present for that person Pour as much kindness as you can into them. Be patient. Listen. Allow them to be who they are. And recognize that whatever is coming from them that does not feel good to you does not belong to you. It only does if you receive it. It's like a gift, and you do not have to receive that gift. But use your courage to just stand in the calm, in the quiet. It's the eye of the storm that we have taught about here, where even though it's swirling all around us in a hateful way, we can stand there assured that we are both spiritual beings and it is the one power and presence in my life that has any power to do with me in this moment. I know that it's easy to, to fight back, but... There's a beautiful quote from Martin Luther King that tells us, "In the dar or darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Use your courage to be light and love when you are facing that difficult person. And trust that that higher energy of spirit will calm and soothe and protect and transform. Another way that courage is needed is when it's time to do the right thing and ego says no. You know, um, we talk a lot about rights in this country, how we each have rights to certain things or to be a certain way, and we don't talk a whole lot about responsibility when really responsibility goes hand in hand with our rights. You know, it's not always easy when you've made a commitment to one person to be at a certain event and someone else comes along with something much more fun. To be able to use your courage to say, no, I've made a commitment and I really wanna honor that. It takes courage to honor the responsibility of showing up on time for your appointments instead of staying just another 15 minutes at coffee with a friend. You know, when your um, body wants to check out early from work, it takes courage to own your, your responsibilities that you've made a commitment to, to your employer, to the businesses that you work for. And how many times have you been offered an opportunity to step into the rumor mill when you know in your heart you're responsible is, is to step back out of that? and excuse yourself from it. That's not easy. <laughs> to be surrounded by friends who are having a conversation that is negative, harmful, derogatory in some way, and you excuse yourself from that. It takes courage and it takes an ownership of what you know is right, to do the right thing. Just keep asking yourself, which is going to create a greater sense of connection versus separation. These responsibilities I'm talking about actually are responsibilities to other people. Other people are going to suffer <laughs> if we don't honor our responsibilities. And that just hurts them in a way that kind of gets that slow burn going for them. So take courage to be kind and responsible when you've made commitments to one another. Do the right thing and trust that the universe is going to supply your needs. I know that the ego says, but I'll miss out if I don't do this. No, that's not true. If you're honoring your commitments courageously, spirit will always respond 
and supply every need that you have. One of the things you've probably heard Brene Brown talk about, if you followed her at all, is that courage requires vulnerability. Have you heard that word? One of the things that she says is that vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. I kind of think of the word vulnerability and soft underbelly at the same time. It's when we're exposing ourselves, our authentic self, but we're insecure about that self. We're not 100% confident in who we are. We're letting people know we're opening ourselves up, but we're also laying ourselves open for potential hurt because we're not sure how other people are going to receive us. The truth, in my opinion, is that the real trouble starts when you don't allow yourself to be vulnerable. Because the energy that's required to hide yourself is, first of all, a negative energy. It's an energy that is driven by fear. It's an energy that says, I'm not enough. It's an energy that says, that person is against me. And when we are uh, protecting ourselves with that kind of energy, we are swimming upstream against the flow of spirit. Vulnerability is about going with that flow, opening yourself up, trusting to the divine, and having the courage to reveal your authentic self. And what I have noticed is that when we do that with others, hearts open. I want to share a video with you that if your heart doesn't open and at the end of this, I think it's about three minutes, then let's talk later about what might be <laughs> confusing for you around this. But I really think that as these people stand and are authentic in front of you and a lot of other people, you will be touched by that. Let's take a look. It's easy to put people in boxes. There's us and there's them. The high earners and those just getting by. Those we trust and those we try to avoid. There's the new Danes and those who've always been here. The people from the countryside and those who've never seen a cow. The religious and the self-confident. There are those we share something <coughs> with and those we don't share anything with. Welcome. Det kommer til at stille jer nogle spørgsmål i dag. Nogle af dem kan godt være lidt personlige, men jeg håber, I vil svare ærligt på dem. Hvem herinde i rummet var klassens klog? Who are step parents? <laughs> and then suddenly, there's us. We who believe in life after death. We who've seen UFOs. And all of us who love to dance. We who've been bullied. We who've bullied others. And then there's us, the lucky ones who've had sex this past week. We who are broken hearted. We who are madly in love. We who feel lonely. Bisexual, and we who acknowledge the courage of others. We who have found the meaning of life, and we who have saved lives. And then there's all of us who just love Denmark. 
So maybe there's more that brings us together than we think. TV2 Denmark. All that we share. That's vulnerability. They revealed something private, sacred, important, personal about themselves, not knowing how other people would respond. But especially the one gentleman who stood forward and said, I am the only one here in this crowd that's bisexual, and the response to his vulnerability was applause, a feeling of connection. Can we use our courage to be vulnerable, both in giving from our heart and also receiving other people's vulnerability in our heart? When you witness someone else's vulnerability, I honestly believe that it gives you the courage to do that yourself, to open up for yourself. Can you be the first person? to show courage and reveal who you are to someone else. It doesn't have to be about what you're afraid of. It could actually just be something about yourself that people may not know, which opens the door for someone else to feel comfortable and share something about themselves that you may not know. That is how you build community, connection, intimacy, openness, and love. Vulnerability letting people know who you really are. And as the ego fears rejection, just realize, no, this is my power to connect with other people. It's pretty hard to hate or ostracize someone who is standing there being vulnerable. Just try it. Use your courage to be authentic with other people. Now, I've given you a lot of opportunities to show your courage, you're probably wondering a little bit how to do that. And if you are familiar with Unity's teachings at all, you know we talk a lot about the spiritual qualities that you and I hold in our hearts because the divine rests within each one of us and the divine comes with superpowers. And one of those superpowers that we're definitely gonna need to draw on to show our courage is our power of will. Up here on the screen is an affirmation that helps me remember what my will does. I choose to think, act, and respond to life in alignment with spiritual truth. Now, we can use our will against that spiritual truth. We can use our will to choose fear instead. But the point of spiritual will is to choose to make decisions based on what we know the Spirit of God wants for us. And that's always going to be the highest and best in our life. Another thing that helps us deepen our courage and um, propels us forward is to know why we're making these choices. Why do I want to take this risk? What is it that I want to do that's so important that I am willing to um, possibly fail or be rejected in this moment? And the best answer to that question is because whatever it is I'm about to do is a demonstration of love. It's a demonstration of caring for others. It's a desire to be good in the world, to do good in the world, to see good in the world. And when we let that be our motivation for courage, courage is going to be right behind it. It's probably going to be, yeah, I can't wait to catch up with you, love. Because love is that harmonizing power that really works for itself. There is not a lot that you have to do once you come forward from the energy of love. We also talk about using our power of strength. And so our strength is that which when we've made the decision with our will and we've heard the call of love, strength says, go at it, keep going at it, keep making that decision, keep choosing love. You've got that power of strength within you to be courageous. Another important quality is our power of faith. When we find a need for courage, the best answer to that is to trust in spirit, to know what spirit is offering in this moment. And one of the things that we say here regularly is that when our ego feels like we are in danger, The truth is there's only one presence and power here in my midst, and it's God, and it's good. 
It's only when I set that aside and mistakenly believe that a person or a situation has power over me that we're really gonna have to call on that courage. But we may not be very successful at it then. To be successful with our courage is to do it with faith that God is the power beneath, through, as me in this situation. It's realizing that God is the only source for me right now. When I go to the grocery store and I can't find toilet paper at Jewel, I'm trusting that my source of good, my infinite constant supply of good is going to provide that through some other channel. You might be knocking on your neighbor's door, but trust me, you have got one source and as long as you can use your courage and rely on that, that source is going to be there supplying for you. Also, it's an opportunity to deepen your courage when you give your trust to other people. You may be in relationship with someone that has let you down in the past, but you really know that now is the time to give them your trust. I know that takes courage, but if you're already trusting in spirit, it allows you to give that trust as a gift to this other person. I quoted from this book, The Power of Kindness, I think last week or week before last from Piero Ferrucci, but I want you to hear what he says here. To place trust in someone is like giving a gift. I'm saying to that person, you can do it. You are trustworthy. The gift of trust is a statement about your relationship. It empowers the other person and expands his or her possibilities. Be brave enough to trust them, and that trust will empower them to step into qualities that they may not know they've had. How have you felt when someone has given their trust to you? When they have said, yes, I believe you can do that, and I'm going to let you do that. Haven't you felt uplifted and empowered and realized, hey, they see this in me. I didn't even see that in me. That's a gift that you can give others is use your courage as you trust in them, knowing that they too have that divine spirit within them to propel them forward. There's a scripture in the New Testament. I think it's in the book of James. Sorry, I forgot to look it up. Faith without works is dead. I would like to say that is true up here on the screen. Courage without action is dead. What is the point of courage if it doesn't propel you into doing something. So we just honor that Nike statement and just do it and know, though I don't know the outcome, I will do it anyway. Will you say that with me? Though I don't know the outcome, I will do it anyway. And this is an opportunity to use our power of release and let go of those fears that have been holding us back. We have the spiritual ability to release, let go, and say no to that which does not serve us, to that which does not look like or sound like the wisdom and the love of God. So we can let go and let God and let love propel our courage forward and trust that any act that we take that's in alignment with divine truth cannot and will not fail. Let your courage be empowered by that, that any act aligned with spiritual truth cannot fail fail. Our courage was given to us as that intermediary step between ego and spirit. It's where we have to step out on a limb a little bit further than where the ego would go and reach to that inner spirit within us to grab hold and take us the whole way. And then we can be a demonstration of peace, of compassion, of respect, of love, for one another in this world. The other person that we've been honoring besides Martin Luther King is Mahatma Gandhi. And he said something many of you have probably heard. We must be the change. We must be the change that we wish to see in this world. The question is, will you? Will you be that change?